that money will be yours, my son. Only you know where it's hidden. And no one else must know about it, hear? Now get. Go and hide on the roof. And you, Papa. Get, I said. Thank you for the reception you've given our Gary Maguire, Hurricane West. <laughs> but if any man among you would care to dispute the clearly prodigious ability of the most famous pistol shot of the West. <laughs> but as I was saying, if he cared to dispute the authenticity of this exhibition, let him challenge Hurricane West. And if there happens to be a gentleman with enough skill in this audience, let him come forward. I challenge you. Thank you, sir. Step forward, please. Diddy, I got a few a la Maggie Brown. And I'll get the same old corned beef hash. Hi, Tony. Hello there, Ronnie. Gary! Hello there. Did you enjoy yourself tonight? You are marvelous. Ah, seems I was in particularly good form. Uh, where's that pesky old jug? I can't find it. Here you are. Ah, thanks, Tony. What's that scar on your neck? The scar? An engine arrow. Sue. There were 20 of them and just four of us. But it's a story everybody knows. It's almost like a fairy tale. <laughs> almost. But it sure wasn't. You see, I'm still here. But those poor Indians are all in the green pastures of a happy hunting ground. But do you really have to leave tomorrow? Yes, it's true, Tony. We're going to win it, and then to Lewistown, then who knows where. But we'll be back next year. Gee, but that's a mighty long time. There's so much you have to learn from you first. <sighs> well, you could learn from me. Anybody can teach you. That's what you think. Wait till you get back, then I'll show you what a good display I'm going to become. I'm already training alone, see? Just watch.
Never do that. Don't you ever point a gun at anyone again. Look, it was loaded. Gee, I, I didn't know, Gary. It's a very old gun, but it can kill you just as dead as a new one can. Where'd you get it? Well, I, uh, found it. If we're gonna be buddies, you and me, you mustn't lie. You must have taken it, Tony. It's Mr. Claridge's. He's the, uh, the pharmacist. He's my foster hey, father. Hey, Tony, may the Lord be praised. Where's the pistol, Tony? Did you take it? Oh, don't worry. It's been unloaded. Thanks, Mr. McGuire. Mrs. Claridge is very angry, you know. Come on, Tony. Oh, Let's go home now. Better go now, Tony. Or Marius is getting into trouble. Just a minute, Marius. So long, Gary. I'll see you next year. Don't forget I'm waiting. Next year, Tony. Word of honor? Word of honor. We must go now, Tony. And when I'm talking, you might have the decency to listen. Instead of making your disgusting mixture. Yes, dear. I must. You must make a decision. Now, Thomas. Ah, oh, here he is. Everything all right, Miss Clary. Here, we found the pistol. Give it to me. Uh, Tony, my boy, uh, you've been a very naughty boy, you know. You can go, Marius. Uh, yes, sir. Now, uh, uh, Tony, you know quite well that firearms aren't for children. And when we accepted the proposal of your tutor, Mr. Brody, to make your home with us and to give you an education uh, of some sort, you seemed, uh, well, quite a reasonable little fellow. Although you were, uh, how shall I put it, a bit rustic. But we would never have imagined that you would turn out to be such a delusion. That's right, isn't it, dearest? Makes me feel very sorry. It's thanks to you that I have a home at all. On your feet. Don't you have any manners when Mr. Claridge is talking? But why? It's better this way. So it's better this way. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to teach you with a few acts of this stick. Miss Claridge, if you try and hit me with that stick, I warn you, it won't be all that easy. <gasps> Just take this. <gasps> Not even with a whip am I afraid of you. I never took a thrashing from father. Bullies. Thomas, a letter has to be written to that tutor Brody. But I... Yes, I know. Now, don't try to defend that little rascal. He's a rebel, a criminal, and you'll see that his tutor's informed at once. But there's the question... Right as I told him to do. family in the Bryant. It was all over in a flash. They robbed us of the money we brought along with us. We were on our way to Lewistown. The government had given us a grant of farmland. Bad place for farmers, Lewistown. Others had grants like you folks here, but they cleared out. Those who didn't die of lead poisoning, anyway. Criminal. That's right, good farmland. Yeah, but for Coleman's cattle, that's home range. He wouldn't be worried by no government grants or barbed wire fences. You met his gunmen already. Did you see which way those rats were heading? Toward the hills. That way, son. Caves at Silver Hill. Perfect for making a share out. How many were there? 
Five or six. Not more. Who joined the posse? I'll show Will Crab. Me too. McGuire. Saw your show at Clayton. You're a great artist. Oh, I'd make out all right. I'd be grateful if you'd be kind to come along with us. May I count on you? Of course you can. We'll all come, Crab. We'll attack on two sides. You take the west. Get going. You'll come with me. Right. I can smell smoke. We'd better take a look. You keep an eye on them. Don't let them get away. Don't worry. I got 12 shots. Two each. It's enough for anyone. <laughs> In all, that's $3,720 uh, divided by six. Um, 635 each. 635. Is that right, boss? I don't want that money, see? What do you mean that, Roy? I don't want none of that stinking sheep farmer's dinero. Divide it up among the five of you. Sure, thanks, boss. And this is yours. Count him again, two-timer. What do you mean, two-timer? You ain't cheating me. <laughs> Leave him be. Yeah, no, 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 no. I can't have you fighting over a few measly dollars. I'll make the share out. Not a one of them alive. <laughs> Good job, McGuire. The government ought to give a medal. You can always get free drunk in Green Rock, McGuire. So you wanted to play a lone hand, huh? Well, you did a great job. Sure. Five shots and five clients for Food Hill. That's real shooting. The greatest shot in the territory. <laughs> These are yours. You've earned them. Thanks. But weren't there six of them bandits? That's right. 
One of them got away under cover. But I got a glimpse of his face, and when we meet, he'll get his. One of these days. Here you are, Sheriff. The man was right. Hurricane West killed them all on his own. They tell me it was Hurricane West, Brown Circus. I was told there were ten of them desperados. Oh, there were five. <laughs> I reckon the circus must need some publicity. <laughs> well, read it for yourself, Coleman. Drunken liar. Well, thank you for your trouble, Corbett. I'll go and take care of it. Don't mention it. Me, you fool. Uh, Coleman, that's you. Cut it out. Listen to me. How many men attacked you at the mine, Roy? Around 30. I didn't count. Are you sure? 30? Well, it was around 30. Maybe more, maybe less. Anyway, it was too many for six of us. You're not only a fool, you're a damn liar as well. Read that. Come over here, you idiot. See for yourself. There. I don't understand. What do you mean? Take a look down there in front of that caravan. Do you recognize that man? There goes your 30 men. It's only one. Gary Maguire. entusiasmo, giovanotto. Ben arrivato, signor Bludi. Grazie, Tony. Sono contento di trovarti bene in salute, ma pare che non si possa dire altrettanto del tuo temperamento. Carattere, carattere più che temperamento. Un ribelle. Ho una grande responsabilità, giovanotto, se non altro verso la memoria di tuo padre. C'è un buon collegio a Boston, qualche anno di sana disciplina e tornerai ad essere più docile, più uomo. Siete voi il mio tutore. Sta a voi decidere. Ma io ho già deciso, giovanotto. Ho già deciso. Un altro. Siete tutti. E adesso voglio bere alla salute di quelle sporche talpe di contadini che vengono a scavarsi la tana nei nostri pascoli. <ride> E io invece voglio brindare alla salute di quel tale che in un solo colpo ha mandato all'inferno cinque mangia carogne come voi. <ride> Hanno sentito l'urlo del lupo e già si sentono tutti i lupi. Ma il lupo è un lupo se ha le zanne da lupo. E non difende la sua terra col filo spinato. Niente filo spinato dalle mie parti, amico. E quanto alle zanne? Prova ad allungare una mano. <ride>
Calma, amici! Calma! Giù con le pistole! Ah, bella accoglienza per uno che è venuto qui a offrirvi da bere. Oh, ma... Se si tratta di bere, una bevuta non si rifiuta mai. Così va bene, amici. Ehi, barman! Ma, ma dove sei nascosto? Sono qua, capo. Tirami una di quelle bottiglie. Sì, sì, subito. Tira, tira. Olè! Forza con i bicchieri, che ne sarà per tutti. Offre Gary McQuay, Huracan Away. Non tocca a voi, McQuay. Devo essere io a offrire. Voglio dimostrarvi la mia ammirazione. Avevo sentito parlare delle vostre pistole. D'ora in avanti sentiremo parlare anche del vostro coraggio. <ride> Chiunque al mio posto avrebbe fatto altrettanto. Oh, troppo modesto. Da bere per tutti. <ride> e se parlassimo un po' d'affari? Una pistola come la vostra potrebbe essermi molto utile. Quando il signor Coleman vuole una cosa, non discute mai sul prezzo. Qualunque sia il prezzo. <ride> no, non è questione di denaro. Non potrei mai lasciare i miei compagni del circo. Contano troppo su di me. Ecco l'uomo più forte del circo! Che Ehi! 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 I've seen you some of the place. Silver Hill? No. I've never been there. You're mistaken. Maybe so. But I'll be happier when you're buried in the boneyard. Quit your fooling. So you've never seen me. You're right there. Careful now. You're staking your reputation, Sonny. <laughs> A 
great Hurricane West. <laughs> Seems you're a little nervous. My compliments. Holroyd wins $20. You want to go on with it? Yeah, the lot. Very well, sir. The gentleman bets $40. Bring out the bells for the snap shooting. Forward. The first man to hit the bell without stepping over the red line is the winner. You were very brutal in killing those four boys. They were friends of mine. You know, it wasn't me. Yeah, that's right. But you're afraid to face your audience and tell the truth. Suppose I tell them you did. Go ahead. But it's your word against mine. It's not quite so simple. Now listen, McGuire, I'll confess. If I'm beaten, that is. Howdy, hot oop, to your places. <laughs> Go! you drink a little coffee? I made it specially for you. No, thanks, Maggie. Leave me alone. Very well.
Hi there, hero. Hi. Howdy. Well, well, look who's here. If it ain't Hurricane West. Pleasure to have you in town, amigo. Come and have a drink. I'm paying for it. This time, Roy's a paying. Well, thanks a lot, friends. But not today. I got a lot to do. Oh, McGuire, tied to a woman's apron string. You ain't riled because I beat you last night, are you? Sure hope not. No. <laughs> not at all. Good. No hard feelings, then. Let's drink to our friendship. Perhaps beer don't agree with him so early in the morning. Oh, we can offer you whiskey, and if you refuse now, we'll be offended. <laughs> A small one, then. Well, be our guest. At the evening. Nothing like a drink to clear the dust. Hey there. You help me. Two doubles. To the health of all heroes, real or fake, who are here in Briggs County. <laughs> help yourselves, fellas. Have some fun with him. I had my fun with him yesterday evening. <laughs> Cheers. You don't want to drink alone, amigo. Why, no. A whiskey for everyone. Now, now. Don't step out of blind. Don't you know that everything's offered by Roy? That's generous. At least let me pay for one round of whiskey. It's a pleasure. They're good for nothing. Drink up, McGuire. It's on me. You heard what he said. Come on, now. You think it's funny to take advantage of a man when he's all alone? Well, watch out. You watch out. I might get riled. <laughs> Dust him down a bit, boys. <laughs> Don't move him my way. Come on. <laughs> now, the bombs are out, huh? All right. Stasera sono morbidi come il burro. Te la senti? Siamo ancora in tempo. Va pure. Annuncia. Ed ecco a voi l'insuperabile, il leggendario, il prestigioso Gary Maguire, Uragano West!
E tu pensi che questa sia la soluzione migliore? Non lo so, ma è l'unica che mi resta. La più facile, forse. Non puoi cancellare dieci anni di vita saltando in groppa ad un cavallo e andartene. Già. Ma avrei dovuto decidermi molto prima. Prima che accadesse. Se c'è qualcosa che non so, devi dirmelo, Gary. Io posso aiutarti, devo aiutarti, perché ti voglio bene. E tu lo sai. Nessuno può aiutarmi. Non è un male che possa guarire il mio. Ma non vuoi provare? Neanche tentare? Sono stanco di tentare. Guarda, sai cos'è questa? No, non è stata una freccia su. È un segno che io porto nell'anima, più che nella carne. Ma... Cosa significa? C'era un ragazzo di dieci anni e una mandria di cinque mila capi. Sai cos'è una stampede? Sono migliaia di bestie terrorizzate che fuggono e travolgono ogni cosa. Eravamo a cinquanta miglia da Jacksonville. Io mi divertivo con una pistola e mi partì un colpo. Nessuno riesce a fermare una mandria di 5.000 capi. Saltarono a cavallo, tutti. Mio padre e gli altri. Quando tornarono, ce n'erano tre di meno. Tre corpi ridotti a una poltiglia di ossa e sangue. Erano là. Mio padre mi trascinò davanti a loro. Uno dei tre era mio fratello. Mi vergò a sangue con un nervo di bue. Qua! Assassino, mi disse. E lo ripeté finché ebbe fiato in gola. Da quel giorno ho odiato la morte. E la odio negli altri e per me. Mi fa paura. Paura, capisci? Sono un vigliacco. Well, if that's it, please take me with you, Gary. Are you out of your head? You deserve a man, not a cowardly weakling. You are a man, Gary, and I'm all yours. Forever. It ain't right. I've got to go alone. Oh, Gary. Leave me be. Go away. Go away, will you? I came in my eyes. What you looking for? A, a place to sleep and something to eat for me and my pony. <laughs> Got any money, kid? Be enough for you? Sure, it's enough for you grabbing a couple of beers if you want. Mary, why don't you go and fix the kid his eat? She'll serve you at the table, sir. Gary! 
Gary! Gary! Wherever you are, I'll say it. It's Tony. Tony from Clayton. Tony, my buddy, Tony, from Clayton. <laughs> my go me out, do you? But your home is in Clayton. No. My guardians got too tough, so I decided to move on out of there. They wanted to send me to a military school. That was very wise of you. You want to know something? Liberty, uh, pursuit of happy. Better drink in this time. Bring a glass, will you? Mary. All right. And the others? Where are they? We could ride together as far as Lewistown. What others? The others. The circus. What do you mean, the others? I'm through with Maggie Brown and the rest of them clowns in the circus. I'm through, yeah? Now I'm on my own. Stop it, Gary. I don't believe you. No fool. Hurricane West is tired of the circus. I'm aiming to settle down someplace. That's all. That's okay, Gary. I got an idea. I got a magnificent idea. Ride along with me to Lewistown and you'll see. You'll find on the prettiest little farm. My God, Mr. Brody is a limey, but he ain't like Miss Claridge is. Besides, if you give me a hand, we'll make him change his mind. After all, it makes very little difference anyway. It makes a big difference for you and me, Tony. Shucks, I'm the owner, Gary. And Mr. Brody must agree when the law says that the land's mine. A thousand acres, Gary, right there under the hills. And there are 300 horses in the corral and pretty red cattle on the range. And then the house, with lots of windows. And a porch with a rocker. I ain't been home since that night. And that was such a long time ago. You'll see for yourself, Gary. It's as pretty as a picture. Pretty bad shape. Those hombres ain't farmers. Wonder who they are. I don't know. Believe me, it wasn't like this before, Gary. Aren't you going to say thank you? If it wasn't for us, you wouldn't get any exercise. <laughs> now, just a minute, Norton. Hey, Norton, come back here. Should be ten sacks. Instead, there are only eight of them. It's all I could manage, Mr. Oldroyd. You'll manage two more. Because Roy Oldroyd tells you to. Can you get that through your thick skull? All right. I'll find two more sacks somehow. I'll bring them later today. Get going! <laughs> <laughs> hey, move your fat, Norton! <laughs> Don't seem to be any, any reason for us to hang around any longer. Let's get, come on. Hey, Mr. Norton. Mr. Norton. Tony. Tony Murphy. By all that's holy. What are you doing here, son? I wanted to live on the farm. That's a pretty poor notion, Tony. Who's that? Gary McGuire. Hurricane West. He's my buddy. Better talk at my place. Hey, come on. After your dad was killed, there was no hope for any of us farmers. The cow man was strong enough to make us give him half the harvest. We pay out, and they let us work what little land remains. If you don't pay, you find your crops trampled down by the herds of cattle they put out there to graze. 
In Johnson County, the farmers have put up barbed wire fences, and the cattle keep away. They murdered my pa because of that. Before my eyes. That's right. Clayton, Linnett, and Lewiston are their stamping grounds. But their headquarters is right there on your farm. Now Gary's here, we'll throw him out quick. You're kidding yourself, Tony. That's a job for the law. Not a lad like you. Tony, it seems to me it'd be better if you go to college in Boston. Well, I better make facts of winning. I'll try to find some work there. Want to ride with me as far as Clayton? No, I ain't going. Don't leave us all alone, Gary. Don't desert us. You're the only man who can take care of those outlaws. At Silver Hill, there were six to one, and he killed five of them outright. Please, leave me alone. Half my land will be yours if you give us a hand again, them bandits. I gotta get going. Thank you, ma'am. I'm obliged to you. No, don't go! Let go of me! <laughs> You gotta pay them well. But I already offered him half of my farm. Half of nothing is nothing. No one would risk their lives for so little. Oh, look at that. Now I have the whiskey. Don't want this. Good night, dear. And little me a bottle of champagne. What you say? Sure, I ain't even you say. I'd better be making for bed. I'm tired. The bed's here costs hard cash. You spent your last cents in that whiskey. <laughs> she got a bed, I can have for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Just give me them guns, Gary. Come on upstairs where you can still make it. <laughs> Put your arm around my shoulder. Mighty pretty. I'll look after them until you pay. Anyway, they're no use to you anymore. Without your pals in the circus, they're useless. Oh, pals? Pals are no more tricks, see? Look at that candle there. never betrayed me. <laughs> You're right. You take them, dog. <laughs> to me, they're no good anymore anyway. That's better. Now you're being a reasonable man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait.
Excuse me, lady. Yes? Have you got a man lodging here called Gary McGuire? He's quite tall, wears a buckskin and a pair of silver-plated guns. Sure we have. He won't be awake. Room four. Thanks, lady. Wait a minute. Boy, does your name happen to be Murphy? Tony Murphy? No. My name is Jeremy. Jeremy? Then what? Jeremy Scott. Jeremy Scott. Purdy. It's a real pretty name for a boy. Thanks. Good morning, Mr. Coleman. Hi, Mr. Coleman. Good morning, Mr. Coleman. Good morning. I'm looking for Dora. She's upstairs, I think, sir. Give me a whiskey. Yes, sir. You've got to listen to me. Please, Gary. I'll pay you anything you want. Really, I will. In American dollars. Now you've got to decide. Now listen, Tony. You come here at sunup. 30,000 bucks your dad hit. Are you kidding me? In a cassetta where there are 30,000 dollars. Mark, you wait that a Now, let me go to sleep. Gary, you think I'm lying, but I'll tell you where the $30,000 are hidden. My father said it was my money. Just a minute. You've arrived at the right moment. You get out. I've some mighty good news, Coleman. Know who I've got up there? Young Tony Murphy. Tony? You mean John Murphy's son? Not to be pleased. He's with McGuire. I heard what the kid was telling him. Appears that just before he died, Tony's old man stashed a box away somewhere with 30,000 bucks. Where? I don't know. That little fellow's too clever. When he saw I was listening outside, he wouldn't say anymore. That's no problem. We can find out everything when we have to. All we have to do is to have Brody invite him out to the ranch, see? <laughs> After all, he is the boy's guardian. He'll know how to handle Tony. <laughs> so you go and tell Brody what he has to do. It's not like you think. That money wasn't just your dad's. It belonged to the Union of Farmers. So if you won't talk, it's as if you've stolen it from a whole lot of good people. I'm afraid to trust anybody. But you see, I too. I'm on their side. I was your dad's friend, wasn't I? And think of the farm. You'll need the money to put that on its feet again. Mr. Brody, before I talk, please give your word my father's ranch will be repaired. Do you assure me? But certainly. Of course I do, Tony. Ah, but look who's here. Mr. Coleman. You remember Tony Murphy, the son of Jonathan Murphy? Yes, of course. I was a friend of your father's. Well now, Tony, you've become quite a little man, haven't you? I hope an intelligent young man. After all, we're only here to help you. This money will be all yours, my son. You alone know where it's hidden. And no one else must ever know about it. Yeah, go! 
Answer, Mr. Coleman. Want us to give you a beating? Why don't you speak up, you miserable brat? No, Mr. Coleman. Leave the kid alone. How much do you want to know? No, but wait, Gary. You can, I tell you. Out with it, Hurricane West. You'll be earning a thousand dollars without any effort. Where is that money? Don't tell him, Gary. We've got to stick together. Shut up, you <coughs> rat. A thousand dollars is a lot of money. Sure is. Then you gotta be chomping at the bit. They're just rotten. <laughs> Mister, you can offer me that in double. Or even thirty thousand. I've decided you ain't gonna find out no way. Don't play the hero, you fool. I'll loosen your tongue. For less than that. All right, boys. Come in. I think Mr. McGuire needs special treatment. Want to talk now? Uh, no. Oh no! No! Coward! Bullies! Uh, 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 uh. All right, McGuire. But when you've had enough, you'll tell me. Uh, don't be too sure, friend. Go ahead. <laughs> Have your fun, Coleman. <laughs> Keep an eye on the kid. We'll have to lock him up somewhere. Down in the cellar. Gary! Gary! Don't worry about him. We'll take care of him. A few days without food or water, and I'm sure he'll tell us where it is. that little brat. Gary, it's exactly the same. I recognize it immediately. It was hanging on his watch chain the night the farm was attacked and I ripped it off. He's the one, Gary. It's positive proof. I know it's Coleman who killed my poor father. That night, I hid in the box and now it's in the chimney. Okay, Tony. Let's get out of here. You got a lot of courage. Goodness, you'd have put out ten like him if you'd been in my place. It was nothing, Gary. Tony, listen. I only what I fear. A pistol arrow. Nothing but that. Nothing more and nothing less. You think I'm a hero, but everyone knows I... 
and the coward. No, it's not true. Yesterday when they were beating you, you wouldn't tell them anything. You laughed in their faces. It proves you're not a coward. Yesterday was yesterday. Wait a minute. I'll go ahead. Alone. You keep your filthy hands off, Tony. Are you going to stop me? Yes, I am. Oh. Oh. to go to Norton's place. It's a good hideout. I want you to stay put and wait for me there. And you? Don't ask me questions. Just go there. You're it, Captain. My bet is, that cash box is still in the room somewhere. That's where Murphy was murdered, and that's where they found Tony. Seriously, Coleman, if I were in your shoes, I'd tear the room apart. I think we should wait a little longer. After all, one's a child, and the other one's a coward. They'll spill the beans tomorrow. Mm, hope so. There's a lot of icing on them. You don't love icing. You'll remember, do of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Darling. <sighs> What is it? McGuire. He's escaped. What about the boy? He's gone too. They knocked me over the head. They killed Mr. Brody. You great idiot! Get Olroy right away and find the boy. Then I'll meet you at the ranch. You will hear from me. Uh-huh. Scusate, sceriffo, ma non c'è tempo per i preamoli. Dovete venire con me alla fattoria Norton. Ma voi chi siete? Vi spiegherò tutto, ma ora vi prego. Ne va di mezzo la vita di un ragazzo. Tony Murphy. Vi dice niente questo nome? Murphy? Il figlio di colui che fu assassinato due anni fa? Esatto. Ho capito. Andiamo. Norton, sono McQuire.
Che è successo? Quei figli occhi. È stato mezz'ora fa. Stavo portando a letto i bambini. Mio marito è uscito fuori per fermarli. Ma erano in troppi. Mi sono saltati addosso in tre. C'era anche Orroi. Non ce l'ho fatta. Hanno portato via il ragazzo, Tony. Dai. Call me whiskey. Any news of those two? No, nothing's come up. But it won't be long now. Fill it up. That's one good thing that's happened. At least they killed our friend Brody. It's one less mouth to feed if all goes well. I've been looking for you, Coleman. And I've been looking for him. So everybody should be happy. I want you to come out with me to Murphy. I think you'll find it very interesting. If you mean what I think, Sheriff, it should be most interesting. It ain't probably what you're thinking it is. It's something you lost about two years ago, when you murdered Jonathan Murphy. That's right, Coleman. You guessed it. Something like you got on that chain. The mark you used for Brandon. Tony tore it off the killer that night. Want to know something? Yeah. That killer was you. I wouldn't try anything if I were you. Because, Mr. Coleman, you're in a lot of trouble. Quite some time we've been looking for proof. McGuire has it. And we got a witness, Coleman. Your friend, Murphy's son, that your men had kidnapped. But you'll hand him over safe and sound, or I swear I won't hesitate to put a bullet in your forehead. Get going. Get those hands up. You're wrong, Sheriff. If you want me to go to the ranch, okay. faccia non mi è nuova. Prima è meglio dare un'occhiata in paese. Venite con me voi due. Lo so. A nessuno piace rischiare la pelle. Anch'io sono tutt'altro che un eroe. Ma dobbiamo farlo. Dobbiamo fermare quegli assassini prima che sia troppo tardi. Ogni minuto che passa, ogni secondo di indecisione può significare la vita di quel ragazzo. È un suicidio mettersi contro gli uomini di Coleman. Prova ad avvicinarti al ranch e te ne accorgerai. Ok. Andrò da solo. Sarà l'ultimo spettacolo di Uragano West. Ehi, hey, gente, è successo qualcosa? Bravi, bambini. Che voleva quel giovanotto? Sì, Uragano West. Perché è scappato? Ma gli avrà dato di volta il cervello. Per voi e anche per i vostri genitori. Venite tutti al circo. Tiratelo su.
Well? Do you feel like talking? Or do you want another bath? No, pity's sake. Stop, I'll tell you. Well, the little brat was right, fellas. I reckon there's more than 30 grand here. Not counting the jewelry. Now put it back, friends. Listen, you know it isn't yours yet. There's over 30,000 nearly all in gold. Hope you ain't thinking of keeping it for yourself, are you? You'll be paid, don't worry. You'll all get a portion. Sure, a couple of bucks and a glass of whiskey, right? <laughs> you want to know something, Coleman? I'm through with taking orders from you. on the horse. Look, boy, gallop hell bent for leather. All the way to Lewistown. Find the sheriff and tell him what's happened. And you? I've got an account to settle with old boy. And one with myself. Go on, Tony. Get. All right, get rid of those bodies quick, Jess. Honest up the horses, drive out and dump them on the rain somewhere. Just a family floor. Just a little <laughs> argument, see? <laughs> I think it'd be wiser if we keep an eye on that box together. Yeah, dollars is so light, blow away with the least breath of wind, right, Jess? We better divvy up right now. Then the boys and you and me can get going. You mean you don't trust me, fellas? Oh, boss, of course we do. But let's do it now, it's more sure. That way everybody can. Well, now, would you look at that? Seems like there's still a few of Coleman's men around. Let's finish them. Here I am, old Hoyt. Ready and wait.
Maggie? Ain't you got any? Why, no. Where can they be hidden? Don't you know? No, let's look. <laughs> Anywhere. What are we going to do? me do it. What's going on? Stop there, old guy. Or I'll shoot you like the rattlesnake you are. Watch out. There's only one bullet. Mind, you ain't good because if you miss, I'm gonna fill you full of lead.
Please don't shoot. No, please. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. I'll give you the money. Take it. Here, take it. Take it all. Take it all. Stop that. In Lewistown, they got a rope to string you up in Toronto. Get going. Now that you are rich, Tony, will you still come to see me? Sure, in the front row. And now, Tony, my boy, we must roll up our sleeves. If God's willing, we'll make this into a garden even prettier than it was. Maestro! Music! Come one and all to the greatest show presented by Eustace Brown, which offers you the inimitable, the magnificent Hurricane Wedge! 